Uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Paul first for including me in the show, Characters of Taos. Uh, personally, I prefer the term Renaissance man, but <laughs> character, I, okay. I always wanted to be an artist. I, I knew I had to do it. I, uh, even in high school, I was like, I got to figure out how to make a living as an artist because I just got to. So I even did paintings of me as an artist. But I was in this rural Indiana and there were no art galleries. There was no one who made a living as an artist, no one to say, here's what you do. So I ended up, I rented a house with some other artist friends and we had the idea of let's put all our paintings out in the front yard and we'll sell them and maybe we'll get discovered, you know? And so and it worked pretty good for a while. We sold some paintings. I traded a painting for a frozen turkey, which I was like, whoa, this is happening. Like, I, I can do this, you know? And, uh, but the only thing that discovered us was the zoning police. And they came and they said, you can't sell junk in your front yard. And I said, I said, oh, you're making a mistake here. This isn't junk, this is art. And he goes, well, I'm pretty sure it's junk and you're not going to do it, so knock it off. I was like, all right. In the house, we, down the basement, we had our own little studios. And this was my little studio area. And it's actually nicer than I remember. And, uh, <laughs> which, but, you know, it got me started. And I was making paintings and, you know, working. And, uh, and it was fun. It was a blast. And, but, you know, it was Indiana, and they told us we can't sell stuff. I was making these sculptures, trying to sell them in the front yard. The neighbors were a little upset. And we were like, okay, I gotta get out of here. I'm not, I can't sell this stuff. So I, I, I had a really nice station wagon. My best friend and I, Robert, we loaded up the station wagon and we went to Phoenix. And uh, <laughs> I spent all my money on the station wagon and did not buy a tent. And so, but in Phoenix, I heard there were art galleries. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll get to figure out how to make a living, you know? And because there was no money tree or anything. That's my friend Robert on the ground there. <laughs> and in Phoenix, I started doing these kind of psychedelic huge paintings that were completely unsellable. I mean, no one wanted them. They were, loved seeing them, but no one wanted them, you know? <laughs> and so about this time, I read a quote from Richard Schmidt. Richard Schmidt, Schmidt is an artist who does these kind of small paintings, but they're gorgeous. They're like jewelry. And he said, if you can't paint, paint big. Meaning that, it, you know, paint a big painting and no one know, will notice that you can't draw or render or anything. I was like, crap, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'd never, I'd never bothered to learn how to paint, you know. So I started doing these little still lifes and I did hundreds of them. And I did fish, I did fruits, I did an octopus, I did just everything. There's hundreds of them in Phoenix. Phoenix is lousy with them. But I, I started learning how to paint and how to really do it, you know. Plus, these were actually a lot more sellable. Started doing portraits of friends so I could learn volume, mood, character, personality, all that. We were living in a bad neighborhood, too. And there was a bunch of artists. We were all living together. And uh, there were a lot of abandoned houses. So I could go out in front of the abandoned houses and I could set up for like four or five days in a row and do paintings of the houses. And by doing that, I could start to learn shadow and, and atmosphere and perspective and everything else. And so it was about this time, too. I was about 25, I guess. And the, this guy opened a gallery in Scottsdale where he would only represent uh, beginning artists. And he would sell the paintings super cheap, but he was selling them like crazy. And it was pretty cool. He's still there. If you're ever in Scottsdale, go to Art One. It's awesome. He's discovered like 100 artists now and kind of got them into big careers. And if you try to raise your prices, he'll tell you, just go to another gallery. And that's what I did. I went to Santa Fe, went to Canyon Road. This is called Portrait of the Artist as a Gorilla. It's an Eric Fischel reference, if there's any Eric Fischel fans in there. But uh, got into a good gallery. <laughs> About about two or three times a year, I allow myself to just do a stupid painting, and that's a stupid painting right there. That's very stupid. 
And, uh, but I learned something from him. I learned this one. You don't need a face to do a portrait. I mean, everybody knows who that is. <laughs> now, I'm in a, a bunch of galleries. My, one of my favorite Heinle Fine Arts here in Taos. She's awesome. Sold a bunch of paintings. Uh, Manitou in Santa Fe and Scottsdale is Wildmire Gallery. And so, yeah. Big part of being an artist is learning how to deal with rejection. Something I like to share with people is a rejection letter I got from a gallery. It says, you know, it's pretty basic. Thank you for submitting your portfolio to our gallery. Unfortunately, we're unable to accept your work at this time. As you may well know, we receive hundreds of portfolio submissions a year, unable to accept them all. We accept only a few submissions a year, and yours was not one. <laughs> we encourage you to continue sending images. I got it, and I was kind of in a bad mood, so I thought, I'm going to write a reply. <laughs> Dear Gallery X, thank you for submitting your rejection letter to me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm unable to accept your rejection letter at this time. As you may well know, I receive hundreds of rejection letters a year, and I'm unable to accept them all. I accept only a few rejection letters a year, and yours was not one. I encourage you to continue sending rejection letters and maybe we can work together. Thanks.